this video is largely going to be about using Tollins reagent and Phalanx solution to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. I just wanted to start there with a brief summary of aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acids. So remember, common to all of them is that they contain the carbonyl group, which means they all contain C double bond O. But what about their differences? So aldehydes, they contain the functional group CHO, which remember looks like this. Always bear in mind that carbon forms four bonds, oxygen forms two, hydrogen forms one. Aldehydes are named using the suffix al, so, for example, methanol, ethanol, propanol. So there's that suffix I mentioned. I'll just draw butanol as a displayed formula to show you. So but means that it has four carbons. There's the all-important aldehyde functional group and then just complete the molecule with hydrogens. So there is butanol's displayed formula. Now let's consider carboxylic acids. You might have studied this at IGCSE, GCSE. They have the functional group COOH, which looks like this. And they're named using the suffix oic acid. So, for example, methanoic acid, ethanoic acid. So, I'll draw ethanoic acid just to show you. So, always start with that functional group. Eth means that it contains two carbons, so complete your molecule. So, there's the displayed formula of ethanoic acid. Ketones now. They have the functional group like this, and then named using the suffix own, e.g. butanone. So effectively, how you draw this is you show that C double bond O functional group, and then you need two different R groups on either end to make it a ketone. So in the case of butanone, it looks like this. It's gonna have four carbons, Here's the displayed formula of butanone. And quite rightly, it has two different R groups, which we can see here. So that's how you go about drawing the ketones. As an aside, just remember for me, in terms of their melting and boiling points, carboxylic acids have the highest boiling and melting points. Why is that? Because of the all-important hydrogen bonds that exist between the molecules. Remember, hydrogen bonds occur between hydrogen and a highly electronegative element such as nitrogen, fluorine and oxygen. Ketones and aldehydes have lower melting and boiling points simply because they have permanent dipole-dipole forces which are weaker than hydrogen bonds. Now, to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones, you've got two tests to choose from. The first one is going to be using Tollens reagent. So, Tollens reagent is a mixture containing silver nitrate and ammonia solution. Now, what's actually happening with the Tollens test is that the aldehyde, this is the chemistry of what's happening, is oxidized to form a carboxylic acid. And it's the corresponding carboxylic acid. So, for example, if your aldehyde was ethanol, it would be oxidized to ethanoic acid. But what is the positive result 
of Tollins reagent with an aldehyde, because that's really what they'll ask in the exam. With an aldehyde, you get what's called a silver mirror. So that's a big tick with an aldehyde for silver mirror. It doesn't happen with a ketone. And what is that silver mirror? Well, the Ag plus ions in that silver nitrate are reduced to just plain metallic silver, hence the silver mirror. If you consider the functional groups, you can't oxidize a ketone to a carboxylic acid, hence why you don't see a silver mirror. The second test to prove that you have an aldehyde is Phalanx solution or Phalanx test. This time the Phalanx reagent, blue copper two ions. Upon warming, and I should have said before that you need to also warm the Tollins reagent, warming an aldehyde with Phalanx oxidizes the aldehyde to a carboxylic acid again. but ketones do not behave in this way. In terms of what you see, you see with an aldehyde and Phalanx reagent or solution, you see a brick red precipitate. And the reason for that is because those copper two ions are reduced by the addition of an electron to Cu plus which has the appearance of a brick red precipitate. So let's look at a past paper question. The structures of three organic compounds A, B and C are shown. These compounds can be distinguished by simple test tube reactions. For each pair of compounds in question 1.1 and 1.2, give a reagent or combination of reagents that could be added separately to each compound to distinguish between them and state what is observed. So compounds A and C, let's first of all identify what homologous series they belong to. So we have two different R groups here, which means with that carbonyl C double bond O, it must be a ketone. C is an aldehyde. Remember its functional group is CHO, which we see here. So how are we going to distinguish between them? So it's up to you. Do you want to talk about Phalanx or do you want to talk about Tollens reagent? For some reason, I prefer Tollens. Isn't that weird that you can sometimes just prefer things for no particular reason? Now, Tollens reagent will oxidize an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. And because that Tollens reagent contains Ag plus ions, they will be reduced to form that metallic silver, which is what we see as a silver mirror. So with the aldehyde compound C, we'll see a silver mirror. Whereas no such oxidation takes place with a ketone, so our observation with A is no reaction. If you decided to go along the Phalanx reagent route, you would say again that there'd be no observation with A, the ketone, but the observation with C would be a brick red precipitate.